Hello everyone, uh, please let me know if you can't hear my voice. I'm, uh, I'm a slow speaker, uh, I'm a gentle speaker I would say. Uh, a very good evening and uh, welcome to my presentation and thanks for being here. Uh, I'm a PhD student working under Dr. Apul on rainwater harvesting systems. The work that I'm presenting today is a part of work uh, that was funded by National Science Foundation and the name of the project is UWISE. UWISE stands for Urban Water Infrastructure Sustainability Evaluation and uh, this work uh, is uh, actually being done by an undergrad student, her name is Kelly Davis and I am presenting on her behalf um, and, uh, and this work is not a part of my dissertation so just trying to let you know and uh, I am a student at the University of Toledo and we have a collaboration with different universities for example University of Utah, University of Manchester, England and University of uh, Barcelona, Spain. Uh, uh, before uh, exactly go, uh, going into the rainwater harvesting system, let me uh, introduce some of the issues with urban water management, uh, urban water and wastewater infrastructures in the United States. So uh, I would say the greatest achievement of 21st century is to use the water uh, to flush, flush our human waste to, uh, uh, to the rivers and finally to the wastewater infrastructure and finally to the rivers. And for that purpose, we uh, transport the water from uh, from sources of, for example, uh, lakes or rivers and reservoirs to the water treatment plant. We treat that water, make it high quality water, and we use that water to flush the toilets. And finally, it gets, gets discharged into our wastewater infrastructure, and finally gets back to our uh, original source. And for this reason, uh, at least for toilet flushing, we do not need uh, port high quality portable water that we've been using for. And uh, uh, there is a study in 2009 that says uh, from distributing, from transporting the water from the uh, uh, water, uh, water treatment uh, facilities to our tap or uh, user, there is around 20 percent of leakage that uh, is uh, that there is uh, uh, that happens uh, between uh, the treatment plant and and the user. And we are paying for that in terms of money, in terms of energy, and in terms of greenhouse gas emission. Not only this, uh, in addition to uh, uh, the 20% leakage, there is around 3.2 billion cubic meters of combined sewer overflow in the, in the United States annually. And that's a huge amount of sewer that's uh, overflowing from uh, our community due to uh, the extreme rain events. And we need to start thinking of, are we being sustainable in our approach of using the high So as a, uh, as a part of U, uh, UI's team and uh, at the University of Toledo, we uh, perform a life cycle assessment of rainwater harvesting systems in three building types. The first one you will see in, is an institutional building, second one is a dormitory and third one is a commercial building, uh, is an office building. So we perform life cycle assessment and we did the cost analysis, we did environmental analysis and we found uh, the results, uh, we found different results for different building types. Some building types were more attractive, some were less attractive to implement in our harvesting system for different metrics. 
in, in Edison, there are more than 13 different uh, life cycle assessment studies on red water harvesting systems, figuring out how the energy, uh, energy consumption is and then, uh, and then what the greenhouse gas emission is for different building types. And uh, the results are all over the place. We cannot exactly compare this building to this building and say which building is more appropriate to implement in other harvesting systems. Therefore, the, the objective of this research is to is trying to answer two different questions. The first one, sorry, I don't know what I did. Okay. So the objective of this research was to explain our uh, was to answer two different questions. The first one was. Which of the building type is more appropriate to implement an water harvesting system? Is it commercial building, is it institutional building, or is it residential building? And uh, how much of a greenhouse gas emission can be saved if we move from one building to a national scale? If we uh, uh, motivate uh, all the people to implement an water harvesting system, can we save? Uh, can we make a significant impact by implementing an water harvesting systems? So to address this question, uh, as we said before. There are uh, several researchers that have focused uh, on rainwater harvesting system on, uh, on individual building building types. So we try not to focus on individual building building types, and uh, we try to uh, rely on research based on uh, U.S. Uh, uh, national building stock database provided by Department of Energy. Department of Energy provided uh, uh, divided uh, 15 different building types. Uh, this this uh, uh, was published in 2011. It, uh, it, uh, provides the uh, characteristics of 15 different building types and we subcategorize these 15 types into 5 uh, building types, uh, commercial 1, 2, 3, residential and institutional buildings. We, we took this uh, uh, as our uh, case study because uh, uh, NREL, Department of Energy, claims that this building consists of around at least 60% of the existing building in the United States. So if we implement a harvesting system and we, if we have the results, if we have the savings in terms of greenhouse gas emissions of and water, then this research can be applied to at least 60% of the buildings in the United States. So uh, based on the uh, building characteristics and the precipitation, uh, sorry, uh, building characteristics defined by the NRL database that I explained before, and the precipitation of, uh, we took a case study for Toledo, and based on that we estimate the demand and supply. So what is the trial flushing demand and what is the uh, amount of rainfall captured for each building type. We estimate that and we design the rainwater harvesting systems. For example, rain, uh, rainwater harvesting tank, a concrete pad and a dual piping system, one piping for rainwater and one piping for municipal supply in case the rainwater is not enough to flush the toilets. And similarly pumps and other uh, rainwater harvesting uh, uh, components. And after designing other rainwater harvesting components, we perform life cycle assessment. We used the data uh, uh, from uh, Gabby and EcoEvent and Tracy was used as an impact assessment method and uh, the results at the building scale was estimated in terms of water savings, energy savings and greenhouse gas emission savings. After estimating all the results for the building scale, we extrapolated the results from uh, the building scale to the national scale by using uh, the building total number of building data from Commercial Buildings Energy Consumption Survey, CBCS 2012. So this, uh, this source provides, uh, provides us the uh, total number of buildings and we use, we use that uh, building number to uh, extrapolate the results from building scale to the national scale. And uh, here is the results. The first I am going to present the results in, uh, building, uh, in, in case of building, uh, building scale. So on the, on the X scale I have all the building types with the subcategories and the Y scale I have uh, water savings in thousands of cubic meters. Now you can see that uh, for commercial 2 and commercial 3 building types, 100% of portable water savings was achieved. So rainwater harvesting system installed in those building types was able to supply 100% of the water to flush the toilets. Though uh, the highest water savings was achieved for secondary school, which was uh, which is an institution building. So the institution building uh, seem to have uh, more and our higher savings in terms of water savings. And if we look at this, uh, these graphs, we can see all the buildings considered 15 different types are attractive to implement railroad harvesting systems in case of water savings. Uh, looking at uh, greenhouse gas emission saving, uh, I have two different scenarios, combined sewer system and separate sewer system. So, uh, uh, and uh, I have a similar, uh, uh, on, the, on the X scale, on the Y scale, I have uh, greenhouse gas emissions in metric terms of carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, our, our, uh, our previous study, we found out that buildings connected to a combined sewer system, uh, sorry, uh, the impacts from, impacts from implement, implementing the water harvesting system connected to a, uh, uh, a sewer network that is combined is different than the uh, one connected to a separate sewer system. 
that's why we uh, we plotted the results for uh, the number harvesting system connected to both combined and separate sewer systems. And uh, the results also follow the similar trend is uh, the potable water savings. We can see that the uh, total uh, or higher savings was achieved for secondary school. Uh, though initially we said commercial two and three were uh, able to supply 100% of the potable water, sorry, 100% of the rainwater to flush the toilets to supplement the potable water. But the highest savings were achieved for institutional buildings. And a similar to trend was achieved for uh, greenhouse gas emission savings. Uh, but looking at the combined and separate sewers, the, the blue one is combined, the orange one is separate, the higher savings were achieved for a combined sewer network, uh, signifying that building connected to a combined sewer is more attractive to implement an water harvesting system. This is because in case of a combined sewer system, if we implement an water harvesting system, we will be uh, using the excess amount of runoff that uh, we will kept capturing that runoff and using that runoff to flush the toilets and avoiding the wastewater treatment, uh, stormwater treatment at the wastewater treatment plant. So this is the reason why the combined sewer are more, more attractive uh, for the rainwater harvesting system. Similar trend were achieved in case of energy savings. You can see uh, institutional buildings are far more attractive to implement the rainwater harvesting system as compared to other ones. So uh, I'm not going to uh, discuss in uh, more detail, but uh, let me uh, discuss one more thing. So, in case of separate sewer network, you can see for commercial three building types, there were negative energy, uh, negative greenhouse gas uh, savings. That means uh, by switching from the standard scenario to the rainwater harvesting scenario, the emission, the greenhouse gas emission say, uh, is not saved. So we have is more uh, you know, so we, uh, greenhouse gas emission. So, uh, sorry. So we will be we will not be saving any more greenhouse gas emissions by switching from BAU standard scenario to rainwater harvesting scenario. Therefore, this this building type is not attractive to the rainwater harvesting systems. And similar was achieved in case of energy savings as well. So, uh, so th those were the results uh, for the building scale and, and the total uh, lack, uh, total uh, uh, impact savings for the lifetime of the building. We achieved 75 years of the lifetime, and the impacts were measured on the total basis. But uh, in, uh, Again, further, we uh, we claim that we argue that uh, though the total provided uh, and uh, provided an estimate of which building is better, but we argue that the to total emission does not always provide an actual uh, impact of the building uh, for the rainwater harvesting system because each building has different floor area to occupancy ratio uh, because sometimes a uh, hotel building might have less. Uh, it might be highly crowded or maybe secondary school may be less crowded. So it depends on how much people you can fit in that building. So therefore we normalize the impacts, uh, we normalize the results uh, in terms of per occupant and per square meter basis. On the, on the left hand side, I, uh, I don't know if you can see it, I think I hope you can see it. Uh, I have the impacts on per occupant basis. On the right scale I have the impacts on the per square meter basis. On the bottom I have, on the top I have combined and bottom I have the separate. So you can see, uh, Initially, we said for the greenhouse gas emissions, the sec sec secondary school had the highest savings. But here we can see that the blue ones are for the standard scenario and the orange ones are for the rainwater harvesting system. The higher the savings, the, higher the, uh, the, 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 the greater the difference between the blue and the orange, the higher is the greenhouse gas emission savings. And the, now we can see here second small office and primary school has higher savings uh, from switching uh, from BAU to rainwater harvesting systems. Uh, as compared to the results by the total that says secondary school were better. Now we can see, uh, uh, so this so the, the, this result might be helpful for the designers and policy makers to design the buildings that, on a per, uh, and design the buildings and to measure the impacts on a per occupant basis to whether that building might be effective to uh, implement rainwater harvesting systems or not. And similarly for the per square meter basis, uh, commercial, sorry, uh, residential and institutional building types, the rightmost two building types are more attractive to implement rainwater harvesting systems. Uh, after uh, uh, getting all the results for the building scale, we used the data from uh, CBECS 2012 and we extrapolated the data to the national scale. And here is the data. So, uh, hybrid scenario with the current scenario we have. So, a hybrid scenario consists of 90% <coughs> of the buildings has, uh, is connected to a separate sewer system whereas 10% of the building is connected to a combined sewer system and that is the reality for the United States. And we consider an another scenario uh, considering that why, so what if all the buildings are, all the combined sewers are converted to a, a separate sewer scenario and this is the case. So we can see uh, around close to 41 million metric ton of carbon dioxide savings can be achieved for, uh, by implementing the harvesting systems throughout the lifetime of the building is 75 years. 
Whereas if all the building, all the sewer systems are converted to separate, the emission savings reduces from 41 to 27, close to 27. So yes. Uh, now uh, this is a huge amount of greenhouse gas emission saving, million metric ton of carbon dioxide savings. Is it, is it enough, or is it a good number, or how? Was, so what percent of this is uh, related to uh, the, uh, the annual uh, greenhouse gas emissions from United States? So we will, uh, uh, I, we also compared that, and this came out to uh, be really small, less than 0.1 percent annually. So uh, the. Uh, National emissions for uh, United States in 2012 was 6,500 something million metric ton. And when uh, we, we converted this uh, results into, when, when we compared it was less than 0.1 percent. So it, it wasn't significant, but looking at an absolute number, this is a high, this is a high number. So uh, we are still trying to, uh, trying to uh, focus on, uh, so, so what are the different strategies to uh, reduce the uh, greenhouse gas emissions? And we are trying to estimate the cost for uh, further reduction and compare uh, whether uh, implementing rainwater harvesting system is an, is an effect, effective approach to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions in the United States. Uh, so, um, during, uh, so while presenting my objective, I asked basically two different questions. So first was which building was effective, which building is effective to implement rainwater harvesting system and the answer is institutional buildings. And uh, when the metrics were measured in terms of uh, Per square meter or per uh, per cube per square meter or per occupant, species buildings are better for per occupant basis. Though uh, initially we said institutional buildings are better, but species buildings and crowded buildings are better to implement in order harvesting system when the impacts were measured in terms of per square meter or per occupant basis. And the second question we asked was how much greenhouse gas emission savings by implementing in order harvesting system nationally. This is not a national scale because the building type we, uh, we assume only considers 60% of the buildings in the United States. So we, I would say uh, if, 60, if, if the 60% of the buildings in the United States implements an order harvesting system, then the total savings would be 41 million metric ton. And if all the buildings, uh, if all the buildings are connected to a separate sewer, if the current combined scenario is connected, converted to a separate sewer scenario, the, uh, the emission is 27 million metric ton. Uh, so, uh, while comparing with the national emissions, it is very small, less than 0.1 percent. But that figure is still a significant amount of reduction throughout the lifetime of the rainwater har implementing rainwater harvesting system. And this is for future direction that we will compare the, uh, the cost uh, per dollar of greenhouse gas emissions with different uh, mitigation strategies and compare whether rainwater harvesting system is uh, effective or not. But at least I would say. Uh, it's a, it's a great approach and we can at least make, uh, it's not a significant impact, but it is, uh, it is something. So, thank you if you have any questions. I really appreciate uh, any concerns for our group and for me as well. Thank you. start with the first one, so why can ask gas emission savings, okay. right? Well, it just seems like the metric that's, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, 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 so uh, in this research we used uh, three metrics. The one, the first one is uh, water, water savings, energy, and greenhouse gas emission savings. But later on we focused only on greenhouse gas emission savings because uh, most of those commercial and industrial sectors use greenhouse gas saving as a metric to uh, compare different strategies or products or services. So we uh, use greenhouse gas savings as one of the metrics because it's everyone is concerned about uh, global warming and greenhouse gas emissions. So that's the reason we why we use uh, why we choose you know, uh, sorry greenhouse gas emissions for our research. And for the second one, you asked about storage, like making a huge storage tank. Well, just like how you're gonna deal with that. So uh, so there are different uh, rainwater harvesting tank sizing uh, strategies. The first one, uh, I would not say the first one. The one is uh, using mean monthly. Uh, sizing approach, second one is daily sizing approach, and there are uh, millions of other approach that... But it's not included in the analysis yet, right? Uh -huh. It's 
is it included? It is included in the analysis. So, so for this research, we did um, uh, the monthly tank sizing approach, and we sized it under harvesting tank. So we we can make a huge tank. Let's say for some of the building types, we were, we were not able to supply all the water to flush the toilets. So we could have made a huge tank, but then again the impacts from manufacturing that rainwater tank would be higher. So we need to think of uh, optimizing if, if the rainwater har harvesting system is optimum, has uh, least impact or not. Well, that could also be like a, you have to like a space issue? Uh, we did not exactly deal with the space issue because uh, it's, it's only uh, environmental impact related. So. But definitely, yeah, that would be an interesting question to see uh, if the space available is enough to uh, uh, install a rainwater harvesting system or not. So, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, if I understand correctly, you use the Toledo rainfall to model this system? Yes, we use the rainfall of Toledo uh, for the building scale analysis, and for the national scale analysis, we use the average national rainfall. Oh, okay. Because so I was wondering how you extrapolated to. The yeah. So for the national scale, we use national rainfall. Uh, so it was close to thirty point something millimeters okay. per month. So yes. One final question. Just to piggyback on her question, even mm -hmm. though a lot of other people are using greenhouse gas emissions as a metric, are you thinking about? Uh, doing a study along the lines of like water quality um, improvements. Water quality improvements in terms of. I uh, mean, we would be capturing water that would become runoff, that would uh, result in combined sewer overflows and runoff discharge into polluting water bodies and things like that. So that rainwater would would not make it there. Uh, no. no, for this research we want. I'm sorry, sorry to say that, but. Uh, for this reason, we only focused on capturing the water from the roof, used to flush the toilets, and uh, so the, that system boundary only includes all the way to the wastewater treatment plant. And the water quality issues are not addressed in research. It might be something that we uh, could address, but we uh, didn't. I just feel like it might make a strong, a strong case yeah. for rainwater harvesting. Yeah, it's only uh, it's more related to uh, the environmental impacts by just saving that amount of water. And not, uh, we did not uh, exactly consider uh, the water quality issues and concerns. Even in the, in the, uh, in the parking lots, uh, if we uh, capture all the roof, all the, all the rainfall, there will be some sediments and contaminants that will be washed out. And if we uh, capture that water, it will still remain in the parking lot. So we have not addressed that issue. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.